Hello everyone and welcome to this video on history flashcards. Now this video is all about how to create great flashcards. It's not about the memorization so much, we'll deal with that another time. But this is all about creating flashcards which are going to stick in your memory and be really effective when it comes to revision. Um, first off, uh, when you're coming to revise a topic, and let's say we're going to take here as an example topic, um, kind of the first topic which we looked at, which was the uh, kind of looking at the Declaration of Breda and the terms of restoration of the monarchy. Yeah. So here we've got our personal learning checklist, um, which everyone should kind of have a copy of and have access to. Should be on Microsoft Teams. Um, and if you have a look here, right, we know we're going to have to target these two areas as part of our revision. The terms of restoration of monarchy, the reaction to the Declaration of Breda. Um, yeah, and so we, we're going to have to kind of see how that works and, um, and, and, try, and try and aim our, and target our revision towards that. And that's why personal learning checklists are really useful as a starting point. It tells us what to revise. Okay, great. So... Um, let's take that first topic. So, you know, when you're probably revising, hopefully one of the things you should be using is your book. So you might have that in front of you. You might also have a bit of revision guide. It might be the case that you are lucky enough to have a knowledge organiser on that topic as well. So whichever topic it is though, um, I want you to kind of really kind of be selective about what you're creating revision resources for. In the past, we've probably seen too much on flashcards. That's probably what we've realized and come to realize, which doesn't make them effective. And when you're faced with a huge amount of information like this, it can sometimes be overwhelming. And if you just stick it all on one flashcard or all on one mind map, then it could just make you feel better about yourself, but actually the revision might not be that effective. Okay, so we're gonna focus ourselves on the declaration of Breda. That's gonna be the first thing. We're using our books, we've got this here, that's a lovely little rundown of what it is. So, what do we want to know about the Declaration of Breda? Well, if we go back to what the sort of things we're looking for, it might be facts and examples, keywords, or maybe question-focused flashcards, which we'll come to later. I think first off, if we're thinking facts and examples, well, Declaration of Breda, it would be a really good idea to know exactly when that was. And you can see there, We've got 4th of April, 1660. Probably don't need the 4th, that's probably a bit much, isn't it? But April, 1660. Now, this is the key. When it comes to flashcards, all you just want is one simple question on one side and the answer on the other. Um, this is what kind of the latest research is saying is what makes it most effective. Now, you might well end up with more flashcards doing it this way, um, but it will mean that they're more effective to use. First off, let's categorize it. So um, we're going to do here, so this is kind of the first topic which we're looking at. So what did we call that on our knowledge organizer? It was kind of Crown, Parliament, Plots and Court Life. So let's just call that Crown and Parliament. So we're gonna categorize this. One, C and P. I can't be bothered writing Crown and Parliament because I'll have to do that hundreds of times. So we're not going to do that, we're just going to write CMP, and then we've coded all those flashcards within that topic, within that area. And I might use the same colour card as well, so it's even easier to kind of group them together. And here we go, we're just going to write our first flashcard, and we said we want to remember the date of this. So, when was the... Declaration of Breda um, created. Perfect, right? This is our key, our first key fact about that. And the answer to this, we're not going to go for fourth, that's a bit, I don't really need that exact day, but April 1660. Really useful, great little fact. So, when was the Declaration of Breda created? April 1660, lovely. Smudge that a bit, but that'll do. That's really nice for a first flashcard. Okay, now, in the past, you might have been tempted 
to maybe go for, right, I'm gonna put all of that, you know, what were the terms of the Declaration of Bread and write them all down. But that's probably, again, not a great way of doing this. If we're looking at those terms of the Declaration of Bread, well, how can we break them down? So, what I would be doing is something like this. Um, what did he, oh, peace for the kingdom, pretty standard, but this one's an interesting one. He promised to listen to the advice of Parliament. So, uh, my question here might be, what did the declaration of the D of B promise with regards to Parliament. Yep. And I might hear right here that Charles promised to listen to their advice. To their advice. Okay, now that is so much easier to remember than all of those, isn't it? Yeah. And sure, you might now have to go through and create five flashcards, but that is just a much easier little little bit to remember um, than having all five on one. So that's kind of the advice we're taking with facts and stats and examples. Just break them down. Break them down into more flashcards, which are simple, simpler to revise from. Okay, now let's look at something like a definition. Well, when we're trying to spot a key word or a definition, we're really just trying to think of words which we find difficult. Now, what, is there anything difficult here? Um, I think I know most words there. Settlement of disputes, yeah, sure, royalists. I think I probably know what that is. The only word which seems really difficult, and I think I might forget, is indemnity. So, um, when we're coming to key, you know, key words, that's how I would work it out. Just go for, right, okay, what is the word I cannot remember and cannot understand, um, even now, kind of a long time on. You don't need to write down every single word, that'd be ridiculous. So, just those words which you're struggling with. Okay, so, what... What, and you know, I might phrase it this way, like how can I, um, what word, what word describes Charles's promise not to persecute people the part in civil war, yeah? And the answer to that would be, okay, indemnity. Now that is an effective way of doing that, yeah? Question, and then it becomes an answer. You could do it the other way, you know, what does the word indemnity mean? I promise not to persecute people for their part in the Civil War, but whichever way you're creating word on one side, flashcard on the other. Sorry, what am I saying? Word on one side, answer on the other. So it's just a simple kind of way of remembering that. Okay, so now we've done facts and examples. We've done key words. Finally, moving on to question focus. Now, I'm gonna just move over to a page of this knowledge organize, uh, sorry, the Restoration England Revision Guide, so I haven't printed off the whole thing. Um, also great to revise from. We, uh, which can all be found on teams. But we found here an example of what was important about the Declaration of Breda for Restoration England. Now, there's a lot more information on this card, so we want to kind of um, try and break that down a little bit more, so it's a little bit easier. Um, but this is useful, this is, you know, this is focused on answering certain question type, which might be potentially tricky. So, um, this, this, by the way, is fantastic for on um, First World War when you're doing, say, like rice and account question or something like that as well, where you really want to know how I would answer that type of question if it came up. So how would we do it? So, again, it's still in the same topic of Crown and Parliament. We've got that from a knowledge organiser. 
And we're literally gonna write on one side, explain what was important. about the declaration of brother, yeah? So hopefully you remember what that D of B stands for. Okay, so on. Um, I'm probably just going to, on this one, just go repaired. So we, we're just using kind of the headings almost, repaired relations between king and army. Okay, and two, we've got this one here, set a precedent that the king would rule with parliament. Now, you could potentially put down some facts with, in relation to those, but it might be the case that you don't need to. The reason being is your other flashcards will probably work alongside these enough um, for you not to, if you've done them correctly, because you, you probably would have flashcards about what happened with the army, just like that one which we created with regards to, you know, you could use your keyword of indemnity if you were ever writing an answer to do with that one. Um, and you might have a, you might also have, say, you know, this one. What if, you know, we've just done that one, which relates to that one. So you're kind of, that's kind of a way that I would think of it. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could also put some extra facts down here, like the key things to remember, you know. Oh, um, uh, prom uh, paid wages, only 13 executed, yeah, and, you know, for here, you might do, 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 do. What's, what's a good one here, um, closed star chamber, for instance, you know, just that's like an extra little fact. And you don't have to do that. It could just be enough, you know, it depends what other flashcards you've created. And this is like a really key thing. You've got to think, what have I actually done? And what do I actually need to do? That's, you know, and that's a way that the process should work. So there's no like finite number of flashcards you need to create. You just need to be confident in yourself that you're covering all the key material that you absolutely need to within a certain topic. And I think this is one of those, um, those ones where actually the more flashcards you create, um, the better your coverage is probably gonna be, rather than having, say, like, one flashcard with an overwhelming amount of material on it. Say, like, you know, if you had all of that on one flashcard or one section of a mind map and you're going to feel maybe a little bit that's going to be a lot to remember but it's much easier if you've just got these smaller flashcards which are much easier to use anyway that's our top tip on that one um and i hope that's i hope that's useful so just remember quick key refresher probably three three times facts and examples keywords and question focused ones and um yeah so good luck